that they had a little car fire over here. We'll check it out and see how how bad it is. Not too sure how bad it really is. We'll take a quick look and see. Cars pass by first. was on fire. I'm not too sure what happened. sure what happened or how that happened but um, somehow the trunk ended up on fire I'm not sure if he was filling gas and, it, and that's how it started uh, I'm not sure but nevertheless um, this whole trunk was in flames
one, you can take us up at all now. The good thing is that nobody got hurt. That's the most important thing. I'm not sure how that happened. Um, who knows? It could be a number of reasons. Could have been the fumes from the gas tank got ignited by some kind of sparking. But it's kind of hard to tell at this point because there's no, there's no solid evidence of anything that could um, ignite that. That does look like a battery bank there. I'm not sure what that is. It's like a power inverter. Um, I'm not sure if that was connected in the back of the car or was it just sitting back there. That's definitely a power inverter right there. Now, whether that was connected to the car or not, I'm not sure. Um, have to do, they'll have to do further investigation to find out if that was connected to the vehicle. If that was connected to the vehicle, that could possibly be the culprit. You guys who take up electronics and stuff, you know exactly what that is. That's an AC um, power inverter from AC to D, from DC to AC. Um, that's a compressor over there. Um, got some jumper cables. Sorry, four, four, five. It's kind of hard to say what caused it. You know. We'll, Right now we're just speculating. We don't know the actual cause. I can't tell if that was connected. I don't see any um, connection points where the wires would be connected. Looks like the hot spot of the fire was on the left hand side of the car though. 152 Howard Ave apartment 1. The fire was concentrated on the left hand side. And then it started spreading from the left hand side out. We have it on the unfortunately our car. What caused it is really basically in front of the car. It's gonna be difficult to tell what could have caused it. How you doing? Bravo 102, we're going up to Springfield. Uh, 102, what was that? Yeah, it's kind of hard to say. We're meeting up to 101 right now, and then we'll take that uh, NIDC. Okay. It's possible that the fumes from the gas tank ignited whatever was, um, well, some kind of spark could have ignited from the fumes, because you see how close it is to the, to the gas tank there. And I can't tell if the cap is on or off. Um, it's kind of hard to tell looking at it from here. I'm not going to touch it, but it's kind of hard to tell if it's open or, um, Copy that. Come on, I got it. 
could very well be in the vapors. The vapors are more um, explosive than anything else. Gasoline is a, a combustion. It's, it's a, it, um, what actually causes the gasoline to burn is the um, is the uh, the fumes. The fumes is more flammable than the actual um, the actual liquid itself. I should say. My man over here, he's everywhere too. He's, I think he's channel seven. He's, he's all over the place. That's yeah, he's channel, channel five. Call. Sorry about that. For, uh, but he's stop, everywhere. Stop for five forty-five Freeport Street for a call stating that feels um, like it's going to some type of. Uh, I'm not too sure how long they're to close this gas station down, but uh, it's closed down for a little while. Can I get a additional slide in with the 436 for possible EDP 545 How's it going? So we're at the corner of uh, Dorchester Ave and Columbia Road. 45. Uh, so I know you haven't been there for too long. Put you over the cliff and that uh, I'm going to be hit. I'm going to be like I said, I'm not too sure what happened or how it um, ignited, but somehow, some way, something happened. Uh, so they're going to call a tow truck to uh, tow this uh, vehicle out. Uh, this is not the first time I've seen something just happen, though. A lot of times people leave those um, propane tanks in their car, which is not good. And then the rattling loosens up the, the valve and it, it does the same similar thing. So if you have anything that can ignite in the back of your vehicle that you know of, just keep an eye on it. It could, it could be a jumper pack, it could be a flashlight, it could be a number of things that can ignite like that. Just keep, keep be aware that if it's in your trunk, it could possibly ignite something. And it's the fumes that actually causes the, the, the explosion. It's not so much the gasoline itself, it's the vapors of the gasoline that, that does it. So, a little one spark is all it takes. It's a, it's a highly combustible. They, all the news media, they, they wonder how I get there before them, but I get there, I get there pretty fast. Charlie base one. Charlie base going up. I would check to see if they open first before I start pumping. Uh, they, I was just getting some from inside. Um, oh, they might let you inside, yeah, yeah, you go inside. What happened? Um, the car caught on fire. You know, everybody's safe, nobody got hurt. But um, yeah, there should be no issue about you buying something inside. Okay. All right. Thanks. All right, buddy. Usually the the Austin squad does an investigation on this, but they they may already know what happened. Like, it may just have been a faulty mechanical device that was in the back of the um, vehicle, and so probably no need to do an investigation. Just based on observation alone, you can figure out what what took place. But I um, just want to give you guys some footage of, there was a, there was a I had two options, I had two calls to go to, so I said, let me check this one out. It, was, it wasn't too far away, so I said, let me check this one out. Um, can't really tell what caused it, but there are some electronics in the back that could possibly have caused it. Like I said, it's, right now we're just speculating. We don't know. It, it could have been just a, something simpler as a, um, a faulty um, brake ball. You know what I mean? There's so much stuff that caused that to happen. Um, it's, like I said, it's very tough to figure out what could have caused that. Um, hopefully he has insurance. It looks like it's a... Well, it depends on the value of the car. 
They may total it out. It could be fixed. Probably. It's just that, you know. Gotcha. It all depends on how much he likes the vehicle. 658, contact 9681, please. It's definitely, it's definitely salvageable. It could be fixed. I, I seen cars worse than this yeah. repaired, so it's not, it's not that bad. As a matter of fact, it's probably still drivable. To be honest with you, because since the engine, everything's in the front, it's probably still drivable. I wouldn't recommend driving it like that, but it definitely seems like it's drivable. So you got um. I think the other one is Channel 7. I'm not sure who the other guy is over there. I think he may be 7. So let me take a quick walk around. Alright, uh, 45 I'm going to pull um, up Alright, I'll just summarize it. 45 is pretty long. Uh, 149 Westville, came in for apartment 1. For well-being check, it's going to be the program director for the Boston area, Healthy Families, requesting the well-being check on Carlos Diaz, a 22-year-old Hispanic male, um, and his concern was that yeah, after the um, episode, strange, sending on strange emails to staff, 